Today we're taking a look at these college basketball matches, which are happening on Wednesday, March 1, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and make sure to watch it till the end, so you don't miss any of our picks. Also check out our Patreon if you want access our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. You will find the link in description and comments section below. One more thing before we start, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions. You will find the link in the description and comments section below. Xavier vs Providence. The Xavier Musketeers have been inconsistent in the later stages of this season. They have struggled on the road, dropping three out of their last four road bouts, including a loss to Butler. Xavier has lost to Marquette and Villanova within their last four games. Providence has won three of its last four games. Furthermore, Xavier gives up too many points, and the defensive stats are poor. They rank 313th in three-point defense, and Providence is above average from deep. They connected on 45% of their threes in the first meeting against Xavier. Providence has a slight rebounding advantage, and that was on display in the meeting earlier this month where they out-rebounded Xavier. Also, Providence is undefeated at home. Our team pick is Providence Friars minus 2.5 points. There's no doubt that these are two of the most explosive teams in college hoops. They each rank inside of the top 20 in terms of offensive efficiency, averaging north of 117 points per 100 possessions. However, I simply can't wrap my head around taking the over with a line this high. Their previous matchup was tied 76-76, 152 points, after 40 minutes, and it took a 16-point overtime frame to clear the number. I think everything would have to go right for the game to go over, including an insanely high pace and both teams shooting the lights out. I'll take my chances and say that doesn't happen. There's also the possibility of Xavier's offense taking a step back in a hostile road environment. I think the under is the smart move here. Take under 155.5 points. Maryland vs Ohio State. Maryland has won against the spread in three of their last four games, but have lost their last two road games Austrian shillings. Ohio State has lost nine of the last ten games against the spread. Maryland beat Ohio State earlier this year at home, but did not cover the spread. Look for Ohio State to play Maryland tougher at home this time around. Take Ohio State with the points. Maryland has gone over the point total in four of the last five games and three straight. Ohio State or their opponent has scored 71 or more points in three of the last four games. The last game between the two teams earlier this year went over the point total. Maryland and Ohio State currently rank 326th and 249th in pace of play respectively. Most signs point to a higher scoring affair. Look for this game to go over 136.5 points. Auburn vs Alabama. Both of these teams have been shaky against the spread as of late. Alabama has lost three of its last four games against the spread, while Auburn has lost five of their last six games against the spread. I think these off-the-court issues are going to wear down Alabama and result in an upset or earlier-than-expected exit from the SEC tournament, but they won't lose this one. They are home, in the comfort of the the rabid home crowd, and they'll find a way to win against a struggling Auburn team in a big rivalry game. Take Alabama here to cover the spread. Alabama plays at the second fastest pace in the nation according to Ken Palm, and I do not see them slowing it down in their final home game. Alabama has hit the over in their last three consecutive games and will look to put up points here. Auburn is still in the top half of the nation in tempo, ranking 156th out of 363 teams. I expect both teams will get up and down the floor quickly, with Alabama primarily pushing the tempo and Auburn trying top lay catch up. The Crimson Tide are looking to strengthen their case for a one seed and will fill up the box score in this one. Take the over 148.5 points. The Paul vs Connecticut. All signs point to the Huskies covering in this game. UConn has incredible balance offensively, defensively, and on the glass. The Huskies can score from all levels, and they're trending up heading into March with four covers in their last five games. They are tied with Marquette for the best record against the spread this season. DePaul, meanwhile, has covered in just one of its last ten games. 
the Blue Demon's defense has been virtually non-existent, and they're going to have trouble keeping pace with the Huskies. I'm siding with Yukin to cover. DePaul is giving up too many points recently to not take the over. The over has hit in six of DePaul's last nine games, and they gave up 90 points to the Huskies last time they played. Yukin has an over-under split this season of 18 11 in favor of the over. Both of these teams play at adjusted tempos, ranking inside the top 200 nationally, according to Ken Palm. Neither of them will be a threat to slow down the pace of play. Toss in the fact that both teams are very good three-point shooting teams, and you've got a recipe for a lot of points. Give me the over 148.5 points. Tulsa vs. South Florida. Remember, for as ugly as Tulsa's record is, 5-23, their record Austrian shillings is even worse at 4-22-2. They aren't just losing, but getting blown out expectedly. On the road, they're 1-10-0 Austrian shillings this season, and since that win, they're 0-5-0 Austrian shillings in away games. Of those five games, only one was within 20 points at the final buzzer, and it wasn't any of the last four. USF isn't a powerhouse by any metric, but their offense is miles ahead of Tulsa's, and their defense is at least capable of defending the paint. The Bulls dominated Tulsa on the road already, winning by 27 and shooting 62.1%, while forcing 18 turnovers. At home where they're better, whereas the Golden Hurricane is worse on the road, US should end this one quickly. Take the Bulls to beat the spread against Tulsa again. Our team pick is USF minus 14. Points. South Florida has defended at a high level all year, the Bulls are holding opponents to just 43.1% shooting from the field. South Florida has also played their best at home, and the Bulls will face a Tulsa team on Wednesday that is shooting just 41.5% from the field. The Bulls are 109th in adjusted tempo, but us should slow the pace after likely building an early lead. Take the under 150.5 points. Pittsburgh vs Notre Dame. Notre Dame has struggled ATS this season, and their success at home hasn't inhibited that. In South Bend, the Fighting Irish are only 5-13-0 ATS this season. Pitt is 9-1-0 ATS for the year entering this game. Pitt in general is just on a roll right now, winning 8 of 9 and beating the spread in 6 of those. Pitt's offense should feast on a weak Notre Dame defense, while the Fighting Irish's struggling offense should shoot them out of the game. Take Pitt to beat the spread. Based on recent trends, this could go either way. Notre Dame has been held under 60 points in each of its last three games, and the under has hit in the last four games the Fighting Irish have played. Their adjusted tempo is number 318 according to Ken Palm. Pittsburgh's adjusted tempo isn't exactly fast at number 209, but the over has hit in five of its last six games. The Panthers have an over-under split this season of 18 11 in favor of the over. With both teams relying so heavily on three-point shooting, I'm basing my projection on how Notre Dame fared in a recent home game against another good three-point shooting team, Virginia Tech. The Fighting Irish allowed Virginia Tech to shoot 43% from three-point range and gave up 93 points. The way these teams can bury threes, I'm going to side with the over. Vanderbilt vs Kentucky. There will be plenty of energy in the arena for senior night, and all the momentum is on Kentucky's side. Oscar Chibwa has had a great career for the Wildcats and will look to dominate in his final home game. Vandy's best player is a post player in Robbins, he may be able to limit Chibwa's scoring, but the Kentucky big man is far more aggressive in his style of play and a far more physical rebounder. Robbins will not be able to dominate around the rim in this one. Kentucky senior Antonio Reeves will also leave it all on the floor in his final home game. Vanderbilt's conference road wins have been against lower quality teams like Florida and South Carolina, they have not fared well on the road against tough competition. Vanderbilt lost by 57 on the road to Alabama. Kentucky already beat Vanderbilt on the road by 16, and there is no reason to believe a similar outcome is not looming. Take Kentucky to win and cover at home. The total in their first matchup this season was set at 142.5, and the teams combined to score only 122, going way under the total. Two factors are at play here. Neither team plays at a fast tempo, and both teams feature a center as their best player. Vanderbilt ranks 237th in tempo according to Ken Palm, and Kentucky ranks 281st. This is due to the style of play for both teams. 
Vanderbilt looks to work the ball inside to Robbins, and Kentucky utilizes Cheat win the paint. The two centers also serve as rim protectors and do not give up many second chance opportunities. Take the under 147 points. Richmond vs. St. Joseph's. Taking St. Joseph's to cover their spread in this one for a couple of reasons. We have actually seen this line move to plus 1.5 on some books, however I believe there might be a little reverse line movement at play here. Richmond has a 1-10 record on the road and a 2-9 record against the spread, while St. Joseph's has a 9-6 record at home and a 10-5 record against the spread. In addition, when these teams faced off earlier this season, St. Joseph's won by 27 points on the road, easily covering their considerable plus 11.5 spread. In terms of trends, Richmond has failed to cover in their past five games against a team with a losing record and are 1-10 against the spread in their past 11 road games. Meanwhile, the Hawks have covered in eight of their past 10 home games against a team with a losing record, making me confident in taking St. Joseph's to cover their spread in this one. St. Joseph's minus one point. Taking the under in this one for multiple reasons. Early line movement has already seen this total trending down, so hop on it while you can for better value. Neither team excels on the offensive side of the ball, with both teams ranking in the bottom percentile in terms of offensive efficiency, according to Kempham. In addition, Richmond averaged 69.6 points per game on the season while allowing 68.7, and St. Joseph's averages 72.1 points per game on the season while allowing 73.1. These averages put our adjusted total about 5 points below the given total, indicating further value in the under. In terms of trends, Richmond has gone under in 8 of their past 9 games against a team with a losing record, while St. Joseph's has gone under in 4 of their past 5 home games, making me confident in taking the under for this matchup. Under 144 points. Massachusetts vs. Duquesne. The Minutemen are 0-6 at TS in their last six road games versus a team with a home winning percent greater than 0.600, 1-8 at TS in their last nine road games, and 1-6 at TS in their last seven games overall. The Dukes are 4-0 at TS in their last four Wednesday games, and the home team is 5-1 at TS in the last six meetings between these programs. I'll take Duquesne to win by 11 or more points at home on Wednesday versus Massachusetts. The Minutemen are down two key cogs in Cross and Fernandes and have not fared well in their absences. The Dukes are catching fire at an optimal time and will coast to victory with another solid shooting performance behind the arc. These teams are two ships passing each other at night, headed in different directions. Our team pick is Duquesne minus 10.5 points. For a similar reason as above, I'm taking the under 148.5 points. I simply don't think Cumis has the offense to hang around in this game. They're running into a respectable defense in Duquesne, a unit that's limiting opponents to 103.8 points per 100 possessions, 132nd. As for defensive shooting, the Dukes are holding their opponents to a 43.7% field goal percentage, 149th. Factor in that the Minutemen are away from their home court and everything points to the under. Per Oddsark, the under is 5-0 in Duquesne's last five home games. The under has also cashed in four of Umas's last five games overall. Let's root for defense in this one give me the under 148.5 points. George Washington vs. Davidson. While I believe Davidson will win this game, with the way George Washington is playing, it's hard to imagine them losing by nine or more points. Their last two games as underdogs were on the road, and the Colonials not only forced overtime, but wound up winning. Only one of Davidson's wins during their winning streak was by at least nine. Offensively, these teams stack up fairly similarly, and while the home court and defensive edge is all Davidson, I'm not sure if it'll be enough to dominate a George Washington team that's been feisty the past couple of weeks. I like George Washington keeping it close and covering for a fourth straight time. Our team pick is George Washington plus 8.5 points. GW has gone over the point total in three straight games, and they have scored 83 or more points in their previous three games. Davidson has gone over the point total in three of their last six games. They have scored 71 or more in three straight. Davidson and George Washington currently rank 258th and 66th in pace of play, respectively. Most signs point to a higher scoring affair. Look for this game to go over. 